Hey everyone, good morning. Happy Friday. Um, I have a few items to pass on at the top and then I'd be happy to dive in and take your questions. So yesterday, as you're aware, the department announced the release of the 2022 strategic reviews of the National Defense Strategy, Nuclear Posture Review, and Missile Defense Review. For the first time in its history, the department conducted all major strategic reviews in an integrated way aligned with the national security strategy. The 2022 NDS sets the department's strategic direction and priorities for the joint force, identifying how the military will meet growing threats to U.S. national security interests and to a stable and open international system. Also on that note, today the department is releasing the fiscal year's 2022-2026 strategic management plan as required by the Government Performance and Results Modernization Act of 2010. The SMP articulates the strategy, sorry, the Secretary of Defense's strategic priorities consistent with the NDS with an emphasis on priorities focused on building enduring advantages. The SMP provides a management pr framework for describing general and long-term goals, actions the department will take to realize those goals, and how the department will address challenges and risks that may hinder achieving results. And it focuses on strengthening the business and management capabilities necessary to implement the NDS. This will be available, the SMP will be available on uh, defense.gov later today. Um, turning to other news, um, today the department is announcing the authorization of the 24th presidential drawdown of security assistance valued at up to $275 million to meet Ukraine's critical security and defense needs. This authorization is, again, our 24th drawdown of equipment from DOD inventories for Ukraine since August 2021. Capabilities in this package, which you'll see up here, additional ammunition for HIMARS, which are the High Mobility Artillery Rocket Systems, 500 precision-guided 155 artillery rounds, 2,000 155-millimeter rounds of remote anti-armor mine systems, more than 1,300 anti-armor systems, 125 Humvees, uh, small arms and more than 2.75 million rounds of small arms ammunition, and four satellite communications antennas. In total, the U.S. has committed more than $18.5 billion in security assistance to Ukraine since the beginning of the Biden administration. Uh, just two more things here. I'd also like to announce that the change of responsibility ceremony and the retirement of United States Space Force's first Chief of Space Operations, General John W. J. Raymond, Secretary of the Air Force Frank Kendall will officiate the change of command responsibility ceremony, where General Raymond will relinquish command to Lieutenant General B. Chance Saltzman, Deputy Chief of Space Operations for Operation Cyber and Nuclear USSF at 10.30 a.m. at Joint Base Andrews, Hangar 3. Secretary Austin will also be present, and General Raymond will award and provide, uh, sorry, will Secretary Austin will present General Raymond with an award and provide remarks. And lastly, on Monday, the 31st, the U.S. Army Pacific will begin their first Joint Pacific Multinational Readiness Center, which JM, JPMRC rotation in Hawaii. The JPMRC is the first combat training center established by the U.S. Army in over 50 years and is the first combat training center for the Indo-Pacific. It will include several thousand participants from all U.S. Joint Services and the Coast Guard, as well as active participants from Thailand, Indonesia, and the Philippines. JP MRC increases combined training opportunities for our regional allies and our partners and produces significant cost savings versus moving personnel and equipment to continental U.S. training facilities. And with that, I'd be happy to take your questions. I'm going to first turn it over to Lita, who's joining us on the phone. Hi, Sabrina. Uh, thank you. I have a couple of quick things. Um, first, the secretary, I just want to make sure where I'm interpreting the secretary's comments yesterday accurately. He said, we'll be able to get the capability <clears throat> and uh, trained troops married up in Ukraine on the NASAMs uh, early next month. Um, it, does that, uh, my hearing that correctly, that means that there are already troops trained on the NASAMs in Ukraine or, or that have been trained 
there are already Ukrainian troops that have been trained um, that are ready to use these NASAMs uh, early next month when they arrive? And is there um, also the MRAM uh, ammunition already there? Um, and then just secondly, very quickly also, um, can you say um, whether or not there are a thousands or tens of thousands of Russian troops that have come into Ukraine, that are the new troops that have just uh, been uh, brought in as conscripts, the Russians have said 82,000 are in, and, the, and defense officials have been saying it's only been, a, they've only seen small numbers. I'm trying to um, figure out which is accurate. Thank you. Sure, thanks Lita for the questions. Um, a few things to unpack there. So first, in terms of the training when um, on your question with uh, training on the NASAMs, um, there is a training program uh, with this system. And once it has been completed, uh, the system will be ready for delivery uh, to Ukraine. And we anticipate that that training program will conclude soon. Um, for operational security, I'm not going to be able to provide more details on that. Um, but for when the NASAMs are delivered in country, I would refer you to um, our Ukrainian partners to make that announcement. Um, and on your second question um, on the troop numbers um, that the that has been reported um, of Russian troops coming into Ukraine, I've seen the open source reporting. I have nothing more to add at this time. Um, it's something that uh, you know we're, we continue to monitor and assess the situation on the ground, but um, I have nothing to add to, to those uh, those reports at this time. I'm going to turn it over to the room. Yeah, go ahead. Hi, thanks so much, Sabrina. Um, I have two questions for you. Sure. The first one is the nuclear posture review notes that, um, as directed by the fiscal year 2022 NDAA, DOD will commission an independent review of the safety, security, and reliability of U.S. nuclear weapons, NC3, and integrated um, tactical warning and attack assessment systems. What's the status of that review? Has it kicked off yet? Um, and is there anything you can share about when it might be anticipated to be completed? Sure. So I don't have a, a status update or an actual date of um, to announce on when the review will be completed. I'd be you know, happy to keep you updated on that. Um, for more information on the NPR, that is available now. Um, I think you know, the secretary laid out the strategy that, that's been put forward in the review, which is you know, to, to continue to deter any country, any nation from using nuclear weapons um, and, of course, reassuring our allies and partners um, that we continue to work with them um, if any deterrence were to fail. And then um, how concerned is Secretary Austin with the current state of NC3 specifically and how modern NC3 systems are operating? You know, I, I have not uh, been able to have an opportunity to to discuss that with him. I would, you know, happy happily take that question and get back to you. Thank you. Yeah, real. Thank you. Uh, one question on Japan. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some reports that Japan is in talks with the United States to procure Tomahawk cruise missiles. Uh, does the Pentagon support Japan's such procurement to help Japan to strengthen its self-defense capability? Sure. So as a matter of policy, as you probably know, I'm not going to be able to comment on um, any potential arms sales or transfers before formally before they are formally notified to Congress. But look, for 70 years, we've had a very strong relationship with Japan. Um, it's a relationship that has served as the cornerstone of peace and stability um, and freedom in the Indo-Pacific region. Need to work with Japan when it comes to addressing our our regional and global um, objectives. But for any other information when it comes to sales, I would refer you to the State Department. Yeah. Um, I yes, Sophie. Yes, thank you. Um, to go back to the uh, the package, uh, new package of uh, sure. aid to Ukraine. Um, uh, the four satellite communication antennas. Yeah. Are they, are they uh, Starlink or another? company and how were they you know? sure okay so these are these are um satcom antennas that are coming off of our shelves these are not starlink antennas um these just to just to level set here these satcom antennas um 
are going to provide additional communications capabilities to the Ukrainians um, at a critical time, but are separate from what Starlink provides. Okay. Uh -huh. And uh, what about the uh, RAM system? Is it something that um, um, they uh, uh, required? Um, again, these packages are worked out with our Ukrainian partners, and so this is something that um, certainly we have discussed with them, and they feel that um, will make an impact on the battlefield. Um, some of the equipment and systems that are mentioned are, you know, having everyday impacts that we're seeing on the battlefield, and that's why we are providing more, um, for example, more ammunition when it comes to the HIMARS systems. And so um, these are something that uh, we are seeing Ukraine's, uh, the Ukrainians employ successfully uh, on the battlefield every day. I'm going to go back to the phones really quickly, and then I can come back into the room. Um, Sang Min Lee, RFA. Yeah, um, thank you for taking my question. Uh, North, I have two questions about North Korea. Uh, yesterday, North Korea launched two another uh, short-range ballistic missile. So I want to know if you have any uh, comment on that. And second question is about the nuclear posture review was released yesterday regarding the North Korea. So that N, uh, NPR mentioned that any nuclear attack by North Korea against United States or its ally and partner is, un, is unacceptable and will result in the end of the regime. And there is no scenario in which the Kim regime could employ nuclear weapon and survive. Can you elaborate on this part? Sure. So I'll take your first question first, and then I'll come back to the, to the NPR. So um, we can confirm that uh, North Korea did launch two ballistic missiles. Um, just to give you a little bit more detail, uh, the launches were from the central part of the country. Um, we believe uh, early in the day, October 28th, so late in our day on the 27th, um, uh, these missiles landed in the vicinity of Alsam Island. And we have assessed that these uh, these launches, this event does not pose any immediate threat to U.S. personnel or our allies. And again, we like we have and, and we continue to do, we um, are going to continue working closely with our partners and allies in the region. Um, but the actions that the DPRK has taken, again, further destabilize uh, the region and our um, commitments to uh, uh, the Republic of Korea and Japan remain ironclad. Um, in terms of the NPR and um, what was released yesterday, and I, th I think I remember most of your question, look, we released the nuclear um, uh, posture review because we believe that a nuclear weapon should never be used. Um, and part of this review is to ensure that we are deterring um, other nations from using nuclear weapons. Um, our goal is to see a full denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. Um, that is something that our partners and allies want. That is something we want. Um, and so the actions that uh, the, the that DPRK continues to take um, further destabilize the region, but also further commit and strengthen our relationship to um, the Republic of Korea and Japan. I'm going to um, go to our next question on the phone. Uh, Idris, Reuters. Hey, um, two quick questions. Firstly, um, has Secretary Austin reached out to Defense Minister Shoigu um, at any point since Sunday? And um, secondly, uh, is it your understanding that the Russian Grom exercises um, are now over at least the missile launch part of it? Thanks, Idris. Um, so in terms of uh, any calls or any outreach, I have nothing for you to preview at this time. Um, if there is another call, I'd be happy to relay that when that, uh, if, if that does happen. Um, and in terms of the uh, exercises, Russia's strategic nuclear exercises, um, as far as we are aware and as, as what we are monitoring is that they are ongoing. Um, we won't uh, speculate on on future actions, but we are continuing to closely monitor this exercise as it continues, most likely into the weekend. Um, I'll take another one from the phone, and then I'll come back into the room. Um, Laura Sagelman, uh, Politico. Hi, Sabrina. Thanks for doing this. Um, I wanted to follow up um, on uh, Sylvie's question about the aid package and the communications antenna. Is this the first time you're sending? Um, antenna that is not supporting Starlink. Can you just clear that up? 
This is the first time that we are sending uh, four SATCOM antennas. Now, antennas can work with different types of satellites, so it's not just um, that they could work with Starlink. These just help improve um, communications cap capabilities on the battlefield. So can you tell us a little bit more about that? Why are you sending these now for the first time and what will that support? How, how will that help Ukraine in this in this stage of the fight? Well, look, I mean, we're seeing Ukrainian infrastructure and electrical grids being um, targeted by the Russians and these antennas provide an additional capability on the ground um, at a critical time when Ukraine's in infrastructure is being hit. Um, they're not these these satcoms are not intended to serve as a substitute for a service like Starlink. They help um, increase communication efforts on the battlefield. Another follow up, or did I? I think I answered. Sorry about that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you mentioned, or uh, it had been previously previously mentioned that Spain was going to be delivering the Hawks yeah. uh, air defense system. The U.S. obviously has. Plenty of those systems, um, and it was mentioned also that there's going to be training conducted on the systems. Is the U.S. supporting in that training, and is there any possibility on the U.S. Uh, in a future PDA, I guess, uh, delivering those systems to Ukraine? Well, as you know, I wouldn't speculate on uh, upcoming packages, nor would I get ahead of our um, the the leadership on their decisions, but. Um, Look, I mean, Spain is providing uh, the Hawk air defense systems. I'm not going to comment on the training there. But, you know, as you have seen from the beginning, um, we have provided air defense systems to the Ukrainians in some of our very first packages. Uh, we provided 1,400 Stingers um, at, at the very beginning. We've committed to providing eight NASAMs. Um, and I, as Sylvie had uh, asked in one of her questions, um, two we an anticipate will be there next month, and uh, training should be concluding soon, so the Ukrainians will be able to operate those, those NASAM uh, systems. But just to broaden it out, this is not just a U.S. effort. Um, we have our partners and allies, like you mentioned, Spain, but Germany has committed also to providing an IRST system. Um, and that's, you know, that is the point of these contact groups. It is to um, work with our partners and allies around the world to ensure Ukraine has what it needs on the battlefield um, day to day. And um, that's why we're, we're we're extremely pleased that um, our partners and allies have have been donating these systems to Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Ukraine is still being hit by yeah. you know, missiles and drones. Um, would you appreciate if more uh, partners and allies were able to commit more to them uh, to this effort? I mean, we are we are in constant contact with our partners and allies. Um, you just saw this week the secretary spoke with his Canadian counterpart um, and. Part of, I mean, and we're just coming off of the the most recent Ukraine contact group. Um, we are we are constantly uh, working with um, our allies to see what else can be provided. But this is an open communication, open dialogue. Um, we know that countries are doing what they can, and um, we're very grateful for it. Yeah. Anyone else in the room? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I'm late. If somebody okay. asks this question, I apologize. That's all right. Uh, as you know, states, New York State Supreme Court slammed or re rejected uh, New York City's uh, mandate for the COVID-19. Does that have any implications here in the DOD, and um, is that going to cause a more examination of the DOD's? Uh, COVID mandate? Are you, is it still the policy now? It is still the policy now. We encourage all service members to get the vaccine. Um, Look, I mean, require we, we require all service members to get the vaccine. I'm not going to comment on any ongoing litigation. I'm sorry if I, uh, I'm not, uh, just not going to go any further on that on that front. But we, yes, we do require our service members to get the vaccine. And um, as of right now, I have nothing new to announce in terms of if that policy is changing. But right now, it's not. Um, I'll go back to the phone and then I'll come into the room for any other additional questions. Um, Jeff Selden, VOA. Thanks very much for doing this. Three quick questions, hopefully. Uh, first, New York Times is reporting that Somalia is asking the U.S. to loosen restrictions on airstrikes against al-Shabaab. Can you talk at all about what the Pentagon's thinking is regarding this request and, and also what the latest assessment is regarding how strong al-Shabaab remains or its capabilities in Somalia? Second, 
curious if there's any updates on what role the Wagner Group or other paramilitaries are playing right now in, in Russia's war in Ukraine, especially as more regular troops, uh, according to Russia, are being sent to the front. And then finally, um, the Pentagon NSC has said repeatedly now that the U.S. is not seeing any signs that Putin or Russia have made a decision to use nuclear weapons or a dirty bomb or that there have been any preparations for Russia to do that. If that's the case, what does the Pentagon think is the reason that Putin and other Russian officials keep making these empty threats? What is Russia trying to gain from this? Okay, uh, thanks, uh, Jeff. Appreciate the questions, and hopefully I will not forget any. I wrote um, your three down. Um, in terms of what is Putin and Russia thinking, you would have to ask them. I, I can't uh, speak to that. I, I can't get into the mind of what uh, what uh, President Putin is thinking, but I will say that the rhetoric that is coming out of Russia, and not just from Vladimir Putin, but from others, is incredibly dangerous. It is um, destabilizing. It is uh, not something that we would expect uh, from a nuclear power, um, some of the language that is being used. Um, and that is why we are we are certainly urging de-escalation when it comes to um, not just this language, but also just what we're seeing um, in Ukraine. Um, I guess I'll work slightly backwards here. In terms of your question, I think it was on um, Wagner and uh, uh, movements within Ukraine. Um, I, I've seen the open source reporting that you're referring to. I certainly don't have anything to add to that at this time, but if we do, um, I will let you know. Um, and then on Somalia. Uh, so we will not speak to internal policy discussions. Um, our AFRICOM and, and this department here is continually evaluating the situation um, on the ground in Somalia. Um, we work closely with our partners there on the ground on how we can both uh, be effective at defeating al-Shabaab, um, and we're working to continuing uh, having an open, an open dialogue with them on how to improve operations. Um, but in, in terms of any recommendations that the command has on the um, the execution of our mission in Somalia, uh, you know, I, I, I don't have anything else to preview at this time. Um, I will take another question from the phone, and then I will come back into the room. Um, uh, Roxana Bloomberg. Hi. Uh, thank you for doing this. Um, just a really quick question on the ammunition, the 155 millimeters. Are those um, Excalibur? Thanks. Uh, thanks for the question. I'm not going to have more to provide on that at this time. I just would direct you to what uh, you should actually be getting, a, hopefully, a press release in your inbox. Um, I know you can't see the slide on, on the board here, but I just have no, um, no other details to provide at this time. Thanks. I'll take one more from the phone, then I'll, I'll come back uh, in the room. Heather, US and I. Thanks so much. Um, I was just wondering if, in conversations with Ukraine about um, what the United States can provide, has there been any concern about the lack of maritime equipment? Um, I noticed that when we've talked recently that there's been uh, caliber cruise missiles coming from ships, and I was just wondering if there's been any US response to um, providing equipment to take down some of those ships or prevent some of those cruise missiles from hitting civilian targets? Thanks, Heather. Um, as you know, and uh, as you saw this week, the secretary was in, in touch with his counterpart, uh, Minister Reznikov. Um, we are in constant contact with what Ukrainians need on the battlefield, as you can see um, from this package today. I don't have any further updates on any other capabilities that we're providing um, on the maritime front. Um, okay, I'll come back in the room. Yeah. On the package. Sure. Um, for the um, the 1,300 anti-armor systems, are those javelins? Are those something else? Uh, is there any? Um... Oh, um, yes. Let me give you some more detail on that. So the anti-armor systems, they're shoulder-launched multi-purpose assault weapons, and AT4s. Okay. And then on the on the Starlink, you said it's not intended as a, or the antennas are not intended as a substitute for Starlink. Right. Is there any connection between the recent uncertainty about Starlink and the provision of these antennas at this time? Um, is it kind of an augmentation in light of uncertainty related to Starlink, or is there no link there at all? No, there's not. This is um, something, you know, we're seeing critical infrastructure in Ukraine being hit. Um, and while the Ukrainians do have access to 
the Starlink capabilities, um, having additional SATCOM capabilities on the ground um, is is certainly helpful for them. Um, it provides for better uh, just general command and control on the ground. And so, um, but no, nothing to do in terms of uh, access to Starlink. Mo, did you have a question? Yeah. Uh, so the governor of New York has mobilized the National Guard to help with asylum seekers who have been arriving to shelters in, in around New York City. I was wondering if you could tell us if you had any more information about uh, how many Guard have actually been requested, what they'll be doing, what shelters they've been placed at. And then ha additionally, have there been any additional requests uh, put in this week? Or this week. Uh, thanks for the question. I actually I don't have more information on that at this time. I'd be happy to look into that, but I would I would actually direct you to the National Guard for those for those numbers. And I'm sorry. Did you have another follow up? To, okay, you're great. Okay, yes. Uh, my question is about NPR in China. Sure. Uh, NPR released yesterday mentioned that the U.S. has made greater progress about the dialogue and crisis management with China. But uh, China, uh, as a reaction to NPR, they accused U.S. that the U.S. uses nuclear weapons for geopolitical uh, goals and it's against the expectation of preventing nuclear war. So h how do you react to Chinese? Sure. Attitude? Uh, our goal, uh, using a nuclear weapon is, is never our goal. Uh, we, our goal is to deter. Um, we, and, that, and that's, you know, of course, laid out in the NDS. But one of the things that's also laid out is, uh, and that the secretary spoke more about, is deterring strategic attacks on the United States, our allies and our partners, um, deterring aggression, and uh, being prepared to prevail in conflict if necessary. Look, we don't seek we don't see conflict with China. Uh, we can be we can be competitors, but we also know that China remains our pacing challenge, um, and and so we are going to continue to um, make sure that we are responsible in how we um, use our our weapons and our and our capabilities. But um, our main goal here is to deter. Do you have an expectation that the U.S. can resume the dialogue? We we would always we always would like to maintain an open dialogue. Um, that's something that you've seen the secretary do um, uh, before, and so we you know are I would certainly say that um, we welcome an open communication dialogue with China. I'm going to take one more question from the phone, and then if anyone has any last questions, I will come to the room. I realized I let I missed uh, Louis Martinez, ABC. Hi, Sabrina. Um, this is an out-of-left-field question, maybe an out-of-this-world question. Um, it has to do with UAPs, um, unexplained aerial phenomena. Uh, four months ago, uh, Dr. Hicks um, established something called ARO, uh, the All-Domain Anomaly Resolution Office, kind of a change from the previous AOI MSG <laughs> organization. Um, how is that progress going with uh, in terms of UAP analysis? Um, in terms of what you know, what progress has been made in determining when, what has been seen in those videos? And also, um, there's a report out today that maybe possibly China, uh, Chinese surveillance, um, might be responsible for some of the imagery um, that's been captured uh, that has been partially explained as not being UAPs uh, earlier this year. Um, just looking for some comments on the Chinese surveillance angle. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thanks for the question. I I don't have much to provide in terms of an update on um, on the review and um, more on UAPs. Um, I would when I do, I will certainly provide that to you. But at this time, I you know, and I've also seen the the open source reporting, but nothing to add right now. Anything else in the room before I wrap it up? Okay. Well, happy Friday. I hope everyone has a great weekend, and we will see you on Monday. Thanks, guys.